Hey guys, I'm Anastasia and welcome to Happy Bellyfish channel. Today we are cooking a mushroom recipe. It's a traditional Russian recipe. As you know, I'm coming from the land of forest, so picking wild mushrooms was a big part of my childhood. But to be honest, it was still a very special treat because mushrooms are seasonal and I would do it just a few times a year. So every time my grandmother would make this mushroom and potato fry, it was a very special and a very big deal. It was like a treat. You would wait for it the entire year. Nowadays, it's even harder to find wild mushrooms, and I know that many of you have no access to them. If you can find them for this recipe, this is the best fit, even if they're just frozen or dried. But if you don't have the wild forest mushrooms, don't worry. Even I'm going to cook today with the champignons or button mushrooms. Their flavor is not as strong, so you would need more of them comparing to the wild mushrooms. But trust me, it is still super, super delicious. Okay, let's see what kind of ingredients we need for this dish. First of all, of course, we need mushrooms. As I said, wild mushrooms work the best. If you don't have them, don't worry. Just get a bunch of champignons. I find brown champignons better than white when it comes to flavor, but the color doesn't matter. Actually, after you cook them, they become the same color anyways. Here I have about 250 grams of mushrooms. In this recipe, we are going to pair mushrooms with potatoes. So we need, of course, a bunch of potatoes. I have here some peeled potatoes already and it's about 500 grams, so it's double the quantity of the mushrooms. When it comes to potato, a lot of nutrition is actually hidden in the skin, but for the sake of this dish, we had to peel it. And then we're also having some flavoring options. For that, first of all, we need an onion. The more onion, the better we're going to fry it, and this flavor of fried onions is super important in this recipe. And I'm also using two cloves of garlic. I already peeled it, as you see. Don't put too much of it. We don't want garlic to be overwhelming. It's not the garlic mushrooms. And as a spice, I'm using thyme. If you already saw me sharing Russian recipes on this channel, guys, you know that I really love to use dill and I always put it to many of the dishes that I show you. Dill is very typical for Russian cuisine and it's also something that would work very nicely in this particular recipe. However, I thought you already bored of it, so I'll try something else. Thyme is a wonderful pairing for potatoes and mushrooms. So I'm going to cook with dry thyme today. By the way, if you are interested in the art and science of cooking with spices and herbs, check out some master classes on our website happybellyfish.com. We have cooking classes that are dedicated specifically to Mediterranean herbs and to Indian spices. Well, now you know all the ingredients. Now we just have to cut everything and cook everything. The way you cut the potato depends on your personal preference. A lot of people for this particular recipe like to cut it in round shape. Some people love it to make like french fry shape and this is exactly what I'm gonna do, but I'm going to make it kind of mini french fries. So this is pretty much the size that I want to cut it in. It's your own kitchen, so there are truly no rules. Perfect, this is exactly the shape and the size that we need for our potatoes. Now we are going to reserve them in water and move on to cutting our mushrooms. If you're using wild mushrooms, you can really cut them as small as possible because the flavor will be really strong and it will be easy to fill those mushrooms. But if you're using champignons like I do, try to cut them in bigger pieces because you don't want these mushrooms to be completely lost. Keep in mind that the mushrooms will shrink significantly during the cooking process. So if you cut them too small, they will almost disappear and you will see no difference between a piece of an onion and a piece of a mushroom. Okay, this is the shape and size of the mushroom that we want to have. Now we're going to reserve it and move on to preparing the rest of the ingredients. The onion, unlike mushrooms, has to be cut as small as possible. You don't want it to be very obvious that it's an onion. Perfect, this is pretty much the size of the onion that you want to have. Wow, that was a poisonous onion! I had to cry! And now we're just going to cut garlic in tiny, tiny pieces. Mm -hmm. 
The secret to the flavors of this recipe is actually perfectly cooked onions, mushrooms and potato, perfectly fried. The only way to achieve it is to fry each ingredient separately. This is kind of a traditional secret that I learned from my grandmother and it's normally not how you'll find the recipes online. I'll say first put the onion, then put the mushroom, then put the potato, whatever. But trust me, you really want to fry the onion first, then fry the mushrooms, then fry the potato, or do it at the same time on three different stoves if you have the capacity in your kitchen, and then just simply mix everything together. Here you have it, the real secret. So, we are going to start with frying the onion. For that, we'll have to grease the pan with a bit of oil. I'm using olive oil. You can use other cooking oil of choice. And when it's warm enough, we're adding the onions. We have to saute onions for a few minutes. Our goal is to make sure that they are fried. So they actually have to get a little bit brownish. If they just become transparent, it's not enough. Have the patience. When you feel the delicious smell of a fried onion, you know that it's the time to remove the onion from the pan. The next step is to cook the mushrooms. Same, add a little bit of cooking oil, heat it and add the mushrooms to the pan. The mushrooms don't really need much time to be cooked. And how much fried you want them to have really depends on your taste preferences. A lot of people dislike overcooked mushrooms. Some people love it to be nicely fried. So follow your intuition. I like something in the middle. Mushrooms have a lot of moisture, so it will take some time for the water to evaporate. Now you can see the mushrooms are ready exactly to the consistency that I wanted them to be. It took about five minutes. I probably shouldn't call this recipe the healthiest because there is quite some frying involved. But to make it better, make sure that you use the healthiest cooking oil and also that you don't use too much of it. By the way, cooking oils are a big topic in our Healthy Cooking Bootcamp. So if you're interested to learn more about it, join our Healthy Cooking Bootcamp. It only runs a few times a year, so check out the link below. Maybe you can join the next batch. If it's not open yet, join the waitlist and don't miss the beginning of it. So the last part of this recipe is actually frying the potato. You can also roast the potatoes, so it really depends on how you prefer to have it, but the fastest way is, of course, to fry it. To make your potato really golden brown and nice on the pan, even on a stainless steel pan like I'm using, but not on a non-stick, you have to make sure that your pan is greased well. And first, you have to cook your potatoes on a low to medium flame. And you have to do it under the closed lid. So, in that way, the potato is cooking in its own steam. And when it's about to get ready, you have to increase the flame and to get that nice fried look for your potato. When the potato is ready, all you want to do is add mushrooms, add your onions, mix everything nicely and just cook for another two minutes on a low flame that all the flavors blend together. This is also when you add your thyme and any other herbs that you prefer. And of course, a little bit of salt. You can also add some black pepper if you want to have a little bit of a spike. This is it, your traditional mushroom and potato fry is ready. If you love traditional healthy recipes, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and please do click that bell at the corner to make sure that you get notified about every new recipe that we share.